Bryce, what do you, uh, between your days at Texas A&M, which probably doesn't seem like all that long ago, really, but um, where do you think you've sort of made your biggest strides? Or how did, if you had to describe to someone how your stuff looks different now than it did in college, what would you tell them? Yeah, I think, honestly, like as soon as I got here, um, we kind of, we dove more into the analytics of everything and we we had access to that stuff like at A&M and we just never really got too far into it. And <clears throat> once I got here and I was like, it was presented to me and, you know, I was able to implement it into, into, into pitching, like things really started to take off and, um, you know, pitch usages, getting fastball up, throwing sliders in different locations and stuff is it's it's helped out quite a bit. So and shapes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, pitch shapes as well. But these guys are really good at communicating it in a way that you know like you understand it quickly yeah. and why. Like it seems like it's very user friendly. It is, yeah. It's it's super cool. I mean, like like I said at A and M, we had we had a track man and we had you know rap soda and stuff. But like just getting raw numbers, it's hard to just look at it and know what know what to do with it. Um, Whenever you've never really you know, been introduced to it, so here it's like, you know, on the portal, uh, you know, we got our pitch grades, we have everything we everything we need, and if if you have any questions, they'll they'll show you. So, it's <clears throat> it's helped me out a lot. So, on the portal, what are some of the numbers that really jumped out to you about your stuff in particular over the past year? Uh, really, like as soon as I got here, uh, just going over like pitch grades and, um, you know. In college, like I, I felt like I was good, but like stuff, I mean, fastballs would get hit more than they should, and uh, getting here and learning that like my pitches are all above average, and I just have to put them where they're supposed to go. I think that was one of the main things that like opened up my eyes. I didn't have to be <clears throat> like as perfect as I thought I needed to be in college, and main thing is just getting it over the plate and getting it to the top of the zone, fastball wise, but. Um, that was probably the main thing. Did you always have the two versions of the slider, or has that kind of been an iteration through pro ball? No, that was that was something I picked up last year. Um, I've always thrown the gyro slider. I, I learned that like my freshman year of college. But um, last year I was watching Brash throw against uh, in Chicago, I think, and <clears throat> they like zoomed in on his grip. I was like, hey, I'll try that tomorrow. I was throwing with Pierpont, and I just threw it at him, and he was like, what was that? I was like, I don't know, different grip. He's like, all right, we're going to work with that. And then that week, he was like, we're going to throw it in the game so we can see what the pitch grade says about it. He was like, we need about five, and ended up throwing it like 20 times. So it, from there on, it's kind of taken off uh, the sweeper. So that was an addition, like mid-year last year. Did it feel normal when you, like, when you threw it right away? Did it feel like, oh, this is, this is, this is nice. I like this. Or yeah, it was, it was weird because it was like, like I said, I ended up throwing it like 20 times that game. And it, I believe it was in Hillsboro. Um, but I just threw it as hard as I could and it just went to the zone. I was like, pretty simple there, but. <laughs> <laughs> so does it, does it look like Brashes? Because Brashes looks pretty nasty at times. Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> I've I've had comps to Brash. I think his his is a little harder. So, if I mean whenever I throw it right, it's 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 pretty good. So just gotta keep keep Velo pushing it. Try to be like eighty two with it, eighty four. So it's so. not yeah sweep away from the righty, bears in on the hands of the lefty, and then the gyro. Can you describe the action of that righty lefty? Yeah, it's it's gonna be more Velo driven. Um, I need it to be like eighty eight plus, uh, but it's. Ideally, I want it just to go down, just straight down. So just, you know, nice and firm and have it work down, work fastball up, and then I can go change up and sweeper um, to either side. So Late action where it kind of looks like um, anything else, and then at the end it just dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to Brash at all about that or pick his brain about the grip and yeah. the action on it? Yeah, he, I don't know what's wrong with his finger, but his <laughs> finger bends, and my finger doesn't want to do that. So I, I can't, I can't really do it exactly like him, but... Uh, yeah, we've talked about it, and I told him I was like, "Yeah, I've watched you start and stole one of your pitches from me." So <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Hey, Jerry and Justin and, and some of the guys in the front office have talked about you know we're gonna potentially break camp with our our thirteen best arms. 
you know, when you hear something like that, how motivating is it for you to show up in camp and, you know, show your stuff and, and really fight for a potential spot on this roster? Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's exciting. Uh, really going into this season, coming off of last year, uh, I'm, I'm excited and ready to go. You know, last year was a successful year. I had, you know, I, I was healthy all year, which, you know, I was, I was, I was blessed to be healthy all year and um, able to build all off season and, you know, just excited to come out and throw throw against big leaguers and you know see see the stuff actually play. So um, I'm ready to go. Did your um, did your family get a chance to come watch you in Little Rock uh, quite they a bit? Because that's about three hours. Uh, it's like seven, but oh. it's still like <laughs> I guess it depends on how fast you drive. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a Texas road trip. <laughs> right. Like... Yeah, no, it's way closer than the thirty hour drive to Seattle. Oh God. So, yeah. <laughs> But I imagine they came out. They did. They made it a couple of times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rex, I don't think we don't really know a lot about you because, you know, young guy, like, what do you mm-hmm. do for fun, like, in the off season? you know? Uh, just hang out? What do you do? Yeah, no, I, I was, so I spent this off season in College Station um, for the most part. It's only, like, two and a half hours from my hometown, but it's a good spot because I like to hunt. <clears throat> I like to duck hunt. I like to deer hunt. And we have a we have a property in Del Rio as my and my grandpa's had. It's like four hours from there. It's on the border, and then I can go south about two and a half hours and be on the coast and duck hunt. So I'm in the middle. I'm in a good spot. And then I got two hours to my house where I can see family and friends and stuff. But um, those are the main things I get into. I try to golf a little bit, but it's more of like hit it as hard as I can and then try to go find it and <laughs> just play around. So you're, you're not a George Kirby guy? Oh, no. Okay. Uh-uh. <laughs> okay, don't you're play just, with him. No. He wouldn't have fun with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just t- typical Texas kid then. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you've been a few, you got, you, you have walkout music. It's country music, right? Yeah, now. it was last year. Last year it was Whiskey Myers, so. Oh, God. Quality, man. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Favorite, my yeah. favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's They're playing place. here on the 17th. Are they? Yeah, March 17th. Mm-hmm. Maybe she hook him up with the tickets. Yeah, I have two tickets. I was gonna give them to Cal. <laughs> Me and Cal go on a date over there. Yeah. Well, it's up here. Like Cal doesn't goes on everybody else's date. Yeah. So. Bryce, do you allow yourself to think about how close you could be to your big league debut, or do you just have to, you know, like it's there? I mean, you're gonna right there. If they, yeah. you know, do you allow yourself to think about it, or you got to just stay focused in the moment? I mean, <clears throat> I think about it just because it's like, you know, it's whenever it comes, it's gonna be a big day and you know it's something I've worked worked towards my whole life but it's I don't really think it's any added pressure it's like that's what I've been working for my whole life you know so it's like we're just slowly getting closer to that goal but you know that's not not the end goal so you know just to be as, as good as I can um, and go out and pitch as best as I can every day so that's that's the main thing um, wherever that is you know so be it but was it, was it weird seeing your name like on all these prospect lists and the top 100s and stuff like that? I mean, like, it, you know, it started to go. Like, when you first got drafted, you just do the through hard, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, it's all moved up. Not really. I mean, I kind of had a, a weird path to here, and I always kind of felt like I had more, that I could do more, and uh, it's just, it's finally starting to come together. It's starting to, you know, be more recognized. So it's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's weird. It's just, for me, it's more like I'm starting to get the spotlight more than I'm starting to, you know, put everything together and become more of a pitcher on the mound and uh, actually, like, like pitch instead of just throw. I mean, I'd say pretty much all of college, I just got to think through. So it, Several guys that come into this organization, they just talk about a whole world of pitching opening up, a whole mm-hmm. different thinking about what it is you're doing on the mound and why you're doing it, even in your preparation. Has that been the case too? Even in the workouts and stuff? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'd say like college, you know, it was doing class, trying to work on my finance degree, doing all that stuff, trying to gain weight, but like never really being able to gain <laughs> weight. And, you know, once really once I got to pro ball, I was able to kind of Obviously, I only focus on baseball, so it's like everything started, like I said, it started to come together. I was able to put weight on. Um, last year, my, I was healthy all year. My arm felt good. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely way different whenever it's all I do every day instead of having all the extra extra things to do. But so this is putting weight on. What do you weigh? Like one hundred and fifty pounds? <laughs> I mean, like yeah, I'm like yesterday I was two hundred two. So really? Yeah, we're getting there. We're right. getting there. I can't. Whenever I went to A and M, I was one seventy, and then <clears throat> when I got drafted. I was like 180, 185. So. Or climbing. Yeah. Well, where do you want to be? Like 220 or what? Or 210? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm pretty happy where I am right now. Um, 210, ideally, but I'd probably take another year or so. <laughs> if you hang with us, we'll, yeah, you hang with us, we'll get you there. There's an uh, <laughs> in and out on the corner. I don't know if you know. Yeah. That. Brian could show you. Yeah, Leo's, we went there with Cade. We can put weight on you. We know how. It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but is it is that is that kind of stuff important just for like you know you know looking at the scouting of course everybody talked about your build mm -hmm. and durability you know putting on the weight and showing people that hey I can I can carry the load is that important? Yeah, and I think uh, like you spoke on the the prospect list and stuff. I think going into last season it was a big question mark as to whether or not I could start and whether I could be durable through a season and all that because the most I'd thrown in a season was my senior year at A&M and I threw like 60 something innings mm -hmm. and I put on a little bit of weight last year at last year's uh, strength camp and then last year's off season and you know ended up with 130 innings last year and felt good at the end so um, I don't know if it's a direct correlation as to the weight or just to you know taking care of my arm more but that I'd say it helped I also had you know velo velo increase last year and um, I don't know, hopefully a little more weight, go throw a little more innings this year, maybe more velo, we'll see. Did you feel any fatigue at all when you go in as much as you did, or did you Did you ever, was there ever a stretch? Because, like, some guys will get a stretch about August where they feel it, and then they get yeah. a little boost. I think really, like, the first month in Arkansas, uh, right after I hit the 100-inning mark, I kind of, velo kind of dropped on average by, like, a, a, mile, a mile or two, or a mile and a half, and... But from like a hundred to one hundred and twenty, it's just kind of kind of sore more than more than it was the, at first. But then really from my last like fifteen innings, I was I was good. I get I get a little second wave, so um, finished the year strong. How do you manage the fatigue at that, especially since you're in territory that you've kind of never really been in at that point? Uh, I just you know kept doing what I was doing um, all year. Really, I mean. I didn't know how many if I had an innings limit or if I was gonna you know keep rolling and uh, <clears throat> just kept kept hitting crushing arm care and and eating. At the end of the year, I kind of you know it was weird. In in season in college, I'd lose like ten pounds at least. Last year, we played or I threw over double the innings I've ever thrown, and I only lost like five pounds. But um, end of the year, I was just trying to crush the spread that they brought and, <laughs> and and rip arm care, but I don't know, it came it came along. Was Sean McGrath a big help for you? <laughs> yeah, he helped out. He, yeah. he got it going, yeah. We we always get uh got creative with, with throwing and um and arm care type stuff. Uh that I think definitely helped out. He got a good gig, didn't he? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, he's yeah, he's doing good. I think The Mariners aren't aren't afraid to promote a young guy I mean like you look at Matt and you look mm -hmm. at and George and Logan like it's it's kind of there I mean it, it does it do you feel like that pitching is something they just really understand how to maximize for you guys yeah I mean you look at all the all the pitching talent we have in, in this organization and uh, I think you, you definitely could say that I mean we got everybody from the top to I mean top to bottom we're we're in good shape uh, in the pitching department. They they definitely know what's what's going on there. I mean, we get we got guys throwing a hundred. We got guys with thirty inches of sweep on a slider. <laughs> they they know they know what what's going on. We we watched I watched Parola the first time yesterday. Mm -hmm. I never seen him before. Yeah. What's your impression of that guy? I I love that dude. He's he's funny. We limited conversations, but uh, due to the language barrier, but uh, he's he's good. Whenever, whenever he's in the zone, I mean, he's, I, I would hate to be a hitter. You know, he's fastball up at 99 and then slider at 90 at the bottom. You know, 
just falls out. And he, he came into camp this year with a changeup, which he didn't have last year. So we'll see see what, what he does with that. But I'm excited for him. He's he you know throwing 99 out here uh, yesterday with 10 people watching. Imagine in the stadium, everybody watching him be letting it rip.